Hey guys, this is Ken Champlin. Welcome back again to Ken Champlin Vocal Academy. Um, and we have some loud music that we're going to turn off any minute. Right, Matt? <laughs> Yoo -hoo. There we go. Nice. Uh, anyway, uh, we're... Uh, this, wow, okay, and I'm hearing myself in a feedback loop as I'm talking, so that's a little distracting. But I wanted to uh, apologize for the last stream. Uh, we had a lot of feedback, and within that feedback, it was very difficult for people to really get the information I wanted to give out. It was actually our second attempt at that. But um, what I really wanted to share with you guys is these with regularity, and uh, I want to give you kind of a heads up of what's what's going to be coming down the pike here soon. So, But before I do that, I'd love to get some shout outs, see who's out there, and just say, hey, I'm still here back in Flagstaff, Arizona. It's snowed twice since we've been here, and it is cold, and I'm from Hawaii, so uh, I finally bought myself some long pants. Ugh! instead of the shorts that I was always wearing around. And, and I don't have flip-flops. I'm actually wearing closed-toe shoes. So, so anyway, but I want to uh, discuss some of the themes of what we're going to be talking about because I'd really like to get some feedback from you guys to find out what you guys would like to know about. So um, the first one that keeps coming over, it's this recurring theme, and it doesn't matter if you're 17 or 70, is am I too old to sing? Okay, that's the first thing. Um, so we're going to discuss that at length and I'm going to show you how, A, not only are you not too old to sing, but how we can rock your world, uh, whatever age that you're at. Um, uh, do I or do I ever get discouraged? Um, I don't ever really get discouraged when I sing, but I think I get discouraged when 40 feet of lava takes over four of my homes. <laughs> so, um, oh, by the way, um, I am setting up a new, a new room. This is kind of funny. Let me show you guys something. So I'm setting up this room, right? So I rented this house for eight months, and here's my new studio. I'm almost, you probably can't even really see it that great, but um, I did get to manage to get some of my gear out. But look at what these morons did. They, I had this packaged super professionally, and they dropped my mixing console. Can you see that? That huge gouge in there, and which means some of the faders don't work right. So I'm hoping that as I put this together for a session I have starting tomorrow, um, uh, with Tori Matu that everything's working properly. So I've been trying, hustling hard to get all this stuff together and, you know, buying new gear and, you know, whatever. But the other interesting thing was, so I had this house here in Flagstaff and I was going to buy, you know, it's a really pretty A-frame house and had this beautiful view and stuff. And there's something called due diligence where you, uh, you go through and you have an inspector come and they look at the house and tell you what's wrong with the house, right? During that two-week process, I literally, I had, it flooded three times the whole downstairs, which would have been my studio, because we had some big rains here. So I'm so thankful that I didn't buy that house, because I'm done with natural disasters for a while. I'm like, you know, uh, what some of you don't know is, and uh, in, in the last six months, and I, I am, I'm just rambling for fun, but so you can kind of hear my life, you know, what, you know, everyone thinks, God, he has like this cushious life, you know, whatever. In the last six months, we have flown out, I used to live in California, and my daughter has something called CFS, which is chronic fatigue syndrome. And it's a, a very debilitating uh, autoimmune disease. And so my wife and I have come alongside her and her husband to help with my grandson. So about six months ago, we flew to California, and it, and by the way, before that, wait, let me let me back this up, sweeten the pot a little bit. Before that, we had Hurricane Izel, and our home in Hawaii was the epicenter of the hurricane. Okay, so imagine this. I saw palm trees literally lay down almost flat on the ground. That's how much wind there was. Then lava came the first time, but it was really slow moving, and we had time to get out, and they closed down the whole you know, uh, center of town, which is called Pahoa, blah, blah, blah. So then fast forward a little bit. We had, we went to California to help my daughter living in Santa Barbara. We were there only two days when the fires broke out where we had to get evacuated. It was crazy. So we're sitting there going, oh gosh, what do we do now? We don't have a, even have a place to live. So we moved all the way up to an area called Long Beach. And yet we also had a, a very very important one-year waiting list doctor's appointment for my daughter um, up in San Francisco. So we moved to Long Beach, and for you that, that know California, then we went all the way up to San Francisco. And then the second place that we rented, we had two places. This is now about two weeks apart, a little over two weeks apart. 
because of the of um, all of the fires, it burnt the root system out of the hill and the hillside, and the mud came down and washed out the entire 101 freeway. So we had to be evacuated again from from that situation, and we're like. I could have had a V8. I mean, it was crazy, right? So we get in an airplane and we come back to our home in Hawaii. And two days after that, some people are going to say, I don't want to be around. You can't tell. <laughs> two days after that, the big earthquake broke out in Hawaii, which started all the fissures of all of the lava that started flowing. So as the lava was flowing, uh, we were trying to make a decision. Do we stay on the island? Do we not stay on, on the island? Because it, it could have been very disastrous because if everyone had you know, had to get off the island, you're, mm, there's not a lot of transportation to do that. So um, we, we ate a big deposit on one place. It was like a thousand bucks that, you know, for a rental. Um, and then we moved to California for three weeks. A friend of ours let us stay at their house for three weeks. Uh, and during that time, we were still trying to figure out where we wanted to go or what we could, how we could make this thing work. So a friend of ours recommended San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. So you've probably seen a couple of my videos with Juicy and others, you know, from there. And so my wife and I went ahead while the family stayed back because we're traveling with the whole family at this point to investigate it. And it looked awesome. So we moved to San Miguel de Allende, Mexico for three months. And then... Uh, my son-in-law who needs gainful employment says, hey man, I can't make a living here. You know, I've got to find a place to make a living. Well, because we used to live in California, California has become very hostile to business. So we arbitrated and we landed it here in beautiful Flagstaff, Arizona. And it is beautiful, by the way. So, um, but, so this has kind of been my story here for a minute and, and not being without a studio and being without, you know, just doing stuff like this with my laptop, you know. So, but I want to go over some of the subjects I think that are really important I'd like to cover with you guys. And I'd like to know um, what you guys want me to cover too, because this isn't just feeding you information. I really want to get a, a reciprocal relationship here. So am I too old to sing? Uh, do I ever get discouraged? That's what led to this whole conversation just now. Uh, how do I know if I'm practicing correctly? Well, I'm actually going to go into the YouTube studios. We just um, were given the privilege of... Um, what's called a super channel. So YouTube has invited us to come to uh, you, uh, there into the studios in Los Angeles. So I'm gonna fly there next week. I'm gonna bring a couple students down. I'm gonna do some demonstrations myself and I'm gonna cover a lot of these subjects there as well as what we're doing here uh, with the YouTube live stream. So um, you know, how should I practice? How do I know if I'm practicing correctly? Uh, how to make a living at singing. Uh, that's a good one. I've covered a little bit of this before. Um, is it true uh, that singers either have it or they don't? I'm going to cover that even more extensively than just giving you an Ed Sheeran video that you know he, he talks about it. I'm going to talk about my own experience uh, with that. I'm going to do mixed voice next because I came off of doing falsetto head voice and that's the next progression, something that would be progressive to get into that. So instead of just uh, picking subjects where uh, randomly I've got this topic and that topic or whatever, I really want to make this cohesive and how these things work together so it's easier for you to understand. I do cover all this very extensively in my singing course, How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, but it gives us a, a nice little a taster of, of how, you know, what that's going to look like or what that is like. Uh, my voice sounds froggy. What do I do? Uh, yeah, so um, uh, we're going to discuss that because it has to do with the raised laryngeal position. Um, uh, singers and surgeries. I want to I wanna dig into this more because it really, really is important with a lot of information floating out there about how to sing fry and different kinds of compression and you know all these different uh, um, all these different hurtful techniques that people get into uh, that could really completely destroy your voice. Stage fright. I want to talk about that a little bit more because we've lightly touched on that a few times, but I think it'd be a tar advantage to discuss that. Uh, what inspired me to start singing? I want to I want to share that with you. Uh, let's see. What is my voice type? Now we covered some of this. There's 25 different vocal fox or types of singing. So I may have to try to do a series where I break them up in groups or something, especially at least the women one time and the guys the next or something, because it's too much information to cover. But that's a really important subject because um, you, need to, you need to know how to practice in your voice type and what your range should be in your voice type and how you can increase that range and even cross-pollinate within other vocal fox themselves. So, um, you know, what songs are right for me to sing? That, by the way, that was a that was a, a, a call-in question or a typed-in question. So I'm trying to take this by request 
So if you guys have requests, and then why vowel modifications? That's another biggie, guys. So I wanna cover that also. How are we doing, guys, on, on the audio? Are we working here? I'm just gonna check something here real quick, guys. Bob, Matt, are we good on audio? Because I know it was feeding back before. Okay, awesome, perfect. Okay, so um, I'd love to take your questions. So Matt, if you can throw me up some questions, if anybody you know wants to ask me something right now. Again, this has just been a test, uh, and we're doing this so that the next time I talk, you guys aren't gonna hear, hey, 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 how's it going, going, going out there, 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 there. In fact, that's a funny story, you ready for this? <coughs> Excuse me, this is a gift from Mexico. <clears throat> anyway, um, I have a buddy, his name's Nigel, and he's done like all the photography for you know, all my album covers, and or most of them. And uh, we were at the Galaxy uh, Grand Opening, which is a is America's big soccer team. And I, and I sang the national anthem. And that's why I was making fun about the echoing. Um, and so it was funny because when I, when I went out and they were, uh, did a sound check, the sound check, they took this 12-inch monitor at the 50-yard line all the way out at the sidelines of this thing. And it was fine. I could hear myself. It was still, I mean, a lot of echo, you know, whatever. But I could hear myself. When I actually sang the anthem for 80,000 people, it was... Oh, say, 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 can, 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 you, 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 say, 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 say. It was like, whoa. It was like sinking myself into like a drowning myself into reverb. So um, anyway, uh, what was funny about it is I remember uh, having instances like this where I've had to sing in pillows to warm up in five-star hotels and stuff like that. And I just shut everything out. I forgot about what, what it sounded like out there. I just listened to what I knew was right in my head. And I went through and I sang the national anthem. And then I thought to myself, no wonder when people sing the anthem, they sound so terrible. Because if they have this kind of situation, it's horrible. But anyway, so um, type in some of your questions here, even uh, as you guys get to see this. Go ahead, type in, um, you know, issues that you have, questions that you have. Don't forget to have a singing forums. We've got a lot of people in there asking these questions, getting good quality information and feedback. And I'm going to see you guys on Saturday, this coming Saturday, and it's going to be about mixed voice. And we're going to discuss this because this is a very, very, very elusive subject uh, and even very mis 